Uh, yeah, yes. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, today's topic uh, is uh, based on the feedback from the first one. We want to explore the some basics of reinforcement learning. And those basic we'll cover for today are listed here in the presentation. Uh, if you guys uh, want me to full screen, I can do it. Uh, if you are not, it's okay, then okay, like this. And today, uh, one of the big topics is the value iteration and uh, other uh, topics like multi arm bandit problem, the police iteration, and policy evaluation. And those are very related concepts to each other, so it will be uh, very useful to see them in the code and in the theory uh, back to back. And I think after today's uh, lesson, you will be all right with understanding them. And they're not. Um, uh, sorry, uh, muted someone, I guess. Uh, okay, so I'm starting uh, to actual presentation, and yep, and uh, and if you want, you can uh, reach me. I will share this slide after it, and you can reach me for more questions. And today's topic will include this uh, five or four part plus Q and A questions part. You can also ask questions in the uh, during the presentation. You don't have to wait for ending. And uh, yeah, the first topic is value, value iteration. Uh, I will talk about what's the value in the reinforcement learning domain, and talk about what is the formula of value iteration and how to work in the code about the value iteration and we'll see about that first uh, by the way if there is any connection problem like you can hear you can't uh, see just please say because that's important so you can't fix it and uh, i start with the value function what is the follow function uh, this is really important in the reinforcement learning because uh, value is uh, basically means uh, how uh, observes how good uh, to be in some state. Uh, it's the uh, like a me measure measure of that state in reinforcement learning uh, jargon, I believe. Uh, I think um, the it's also used in the value based algorithms. If for uh, calculating best optimal policy and in the end is, is, is it something like objective function i didn't mean to cut you off but no no i think your uh, my voice was probably a little high okay uh, it's object yes it can be used as objective but uh, i mean it's not used only for uh, minimizing neural network loss uh, the, it's it doesn't have any relationship with the neural networks at all because it's entirely based uh, on uh, another concept which is um, uh, marco I, decision um, processes my uh, my point was like um it's not like a, a optimization it's like a um optimization concept kind of objective function it's not like um neural networks kind of like you you are trying to optimize something like you're trying to maximize your value or gain you know you like that was my try to optimize value function directly you just use it as a measure uh, to get the best policy in the reinforcement learning the problem is to solve how to get the best policy and okay. the calculating value function and uh, choosing best ones is the one the problem uh, that we are trying to uh, solve today and other okay. algorithms try to uh, do similar thing and uh, there are other approaches in the advantage calculation algorithms that use uh, value not only value but they use as a hybrid approach and and this is the the formula here you, i will tell about this now is the actually calculation of the value function in the reinforcement learning uh, syntax, I can say. Uh, it means basically uh, given uh, for any state of uh, using a policy, 
P logo means policy, by the way, if you don't know. Uh, it means uh, your value for a state uh, means uh, the reward you just took after uh, executing that state action and the uh, future rewards uh, discounted by, uh, which this comes from directly from uh, Mar Markov decision processes and how to calculate your value. It means the, the past experience doesn't matter when calculating one state. The only thing matter is the, your current state, uh, current reward, which comes from the state you uh, state action you took, and the future of the expected value. And that's basically most in, in the all of the algorithms. But how to calculate it and how to actually look about that is the parts that change. And I'm moving to slide one page. And this is a really basic, uh, by the way, I took some of them, uh, this example pictures from the book and I also give reference if you want to look more about them you can, in, uh, I, when I uh, share the slides, it's in the last page. And this is a basic uh, like a state machine of value function calculation. And if you want, think like you can go from San Francisco or San Bruno or uh, some other places, uh, what would be the best approach to take uh, to get best value? Because our objective is uh, getting best value, which will give us the best rewards. So we are always trying to optimize maximum rewards for our reinforcement learning agents. And for to that, and uh, in this example, you can see somebody can take this uh, 50 approach when going from San Francisco or going a 42 approach. But uh, in the end, it, this, taking these up uh, roads can change their probability of taking them. So they can, uh, they can calculate different uh, values for it. And you will see about this in the coding example, which uh, also do a grid world example based on this approach. Basically, meaning uh, there are other there are ways to get uh, other places, and but in the end it will go in the same place like this example. Uh, our approach is about calculating best uh, value way. I guess I can say that, and. I also talk about discounted rewards, uh, but I have to give more examples and what does it mean actually uh, in the reality and then in the math and in about calculation and the reinforcement learning world. And the uh, gamma is also written like this uh, symbol, uh, which is mean discount factor. Discount factor used for uh, calculating the importance of your future uh, rewards, which uh, future values, uh, which means how do you care about, uh, how do you think about like future states after you took your state, which is completed, but uh, what do you think about like future? If your agent learning to do something, does it only care current state and the current action it took, or uh, it, does it care for like 50 steps later? And if you don't care for future, uh, you can uh, set uh, gamma to uh, zero, or uh, you can set to one, which means change like both our approaches are very opposite ends. And one means you care immediate rewards, and one means you don't care uh, uh, for future because uh, think like what could it be an example, maybe like a financial example you want to get money as soon as possible you don't care for future uh, because your prediction of future may be not correct but you want money uh, to get you want to get money and we also we don't just use this value we use this as a substract from one and so that's uh, that's why there are two uh, different ends for it. And if you choose a value between one and zero, means you care, but depending on the value you choose, uh, you set how, how much you care about it. Right? Uh, imagine if you 
uh, set it uh, zero for gamma. Uh, that means you don't uh, care for the future reward, which will cancel this formula. And when calculating next states for rewards, the next rewards oh. taken. Work a quick question. Quick question. Um, do you make the assumption uh, where, um, like, as if you get rewards at every single state? Like, is there such a, such assumption so that you basically assign some discount factor to it, or are there states where you get where you don't get any rewards? Well, uh, in the, like the reinforcement learning is all about like decision mark or decision process and you basically have to get uh, rewards and states next states and uh, like uh, the things that i said for every state because if you don't get that will be a very uncertain thing and it wouldn't fit um, mdp process and you couldn't do a reinforcement learning on it so you basically always accept you will get rewards and next state after you took some action and yes, you you have to because that's like a main the, the equation of reinforcement learning problems. And I continue slide because our time might be little. Okay, I'll talk about this. And our, while you guys understood some part of the value, but uh, I still didn't talk about uh, value iteration, which is the the point of this uh, presentation. Value iteration means uh, we basically will calculate uh, all of the values of the old states. So our choice when uh, choosing the best action will be very easy because you will just get the best uh, maximum valued action. The action when you choose, it will get you best value. But uh, while this is very good algorithm and in for it time, you basically can't do it in the real like actual problems because the states for calculating each uh, value for each state and each action is really impossible in the real examples but this, this is really one of the concepts the class concepts and you have to basically understand it and this is can be solved with dynamic programming concepts and this is like basically one of the problems in the dynamic programming and when we are coding, uh, we will understand this formula better. But uh, if you ask where to stop, uh, because in this uh, loop, it says for each state, uh, calculate the new uh, value and uh, for given the reward and discount factor, and just get the maximum of, the, of it. The delta means the difference between your last calculation and uh, your last calculation and uh, current difference it means your when your difference is very small you, you will stop the calculation of this uh, state loop and that basically means you set a very very small number and it reached uh, so small there is no nothing for you to calculate because computers will overflow the numbers under form the numbers so you won't like calculate at all and we will see it will be better understood in the code i believe in this part but it's very basic algorithm and uh, sorry uh by the way you guys can you see it i i will have to look the chat and uh, okay can you guys all or uh, can actually you, guys see you can you can uh, select any number as theta in this algorithm yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. This uh, theta uh, calculation part comes from, I think, numerical analysis. I think it's very uh, basic uh, mathematical optimization related uh, problem or, or theory, I believe. Uh, which means if you loop enough, and if uh, your value will be, uh, basically, you are brute forcing it, and your value will be. Uh, very small so you don't have to care for the going infinity because in the theory it means if you go to infinity you will get optimal policy or optimal whatever you are looking for 
but you don't have to because in math calculation you basically get a very similar convergence and this is what we talk about in more detail and this is uh, talking about the calculation for the future uh, rewards by discounting them and this is just all uh, understanding better in the code uh, actually uh, i can interrupt you in here yeah, because sure. uh, uh, sometimes we will uh, use an expectation of this uh, vs so uh, when it will go to the infinite uh, it's impossible to use the expectation of this value that's yeah. like taking the average right like you you get the expected value right like so in the in some, but in some algorithms not you know, all of them like in probabilistic optimization and decision markov decision processes and stuff you in the end um calculate some uh expected value so yeah. i think that would make sense i mean yeah yeah sure uh, if it goes to the infinite i can do that i can't do that uh, I think uh, I should little talk about this a little bit because after it I will go for code and uh, this is the grid world uh, or, or just one some version of the grid world example I guess and you basically uh, in this uh, boxes you calculate the uh, value of the each boxes until you do all and when you move in this uh, this is the zero the first zero means that it's the ending state and to get uh, so your each action takes a minus one this is reward it means if you are here and in the right box if you want to get here because of your moving you get one minus uh, reward and for another state you will get two to the left and you will get a minus two so basically after calculating all these boxes and their values you will get some uh, kind of like uh, understanding of what it means to move from some state for like this is the actually uh, the optimal uh, like way because uh, we are calculating with our hands now but uh, in order to code this we are using uh, uh, this formula for uh, all purposes uh, and examples we are uh, for today i am using uh, one uh, for uh, gamma value and i will go to code i think after it if you guys have any questions about this uh, please ask okay uh, for code i will try are there are there like further heuristics on uh, like calculating the aforementioned like the previous slide thing like I think that's kind of intuitive kind of thing you know uh, can which, you go back uh, which uh, uh, which equation you were talking okay I Bellman's, op Bellman's optimization thingy yeah are there any any heuristics other than this well, uh, uh, okay, it's like a dynamic programming. There are no heuristic in here, but uh, you can add with uh, mathematical uh, convergence. Uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> well, this is well. This is based <laughs> on uh, yeah, this is uh, this uh, formula is based on like uh, balance. So if you do. Uh, used uh, like MDP process uh, you basically like accept uh, you get uh, using this are good uh, because you basically assume you have uh, best you have the actual states values and if you have actual okay. state value your uh, optimal uh, way will be a uh, way to get best reward will be just getting maximum of uh, each uh, state and that will give you best uh, way to best of policy to uh, get maximum rewards and our goal is to get uh, maximum rewards so we can have like best rewards and that's what we are looking and 
for uh, this example, uh, we are using a grid world example in the open AI's gym pack. And this code uh, is uh, from uh, some guy in the uh, Sutton's book uh, implementation. It's very clean code and no nothing, uh, no other functions. So I took this as an example and I will share this GitHub. I also g gave the links for it in this presentation. And basically, I hope I already imported all of these, but okay, we'll talk about the code. Uh, as you can see, the theta default value is very small number, and discount factor is given as a one. And uh, basically, I will talk about the code itself now, and uh, I will have a talk about this uh, helper function a little bit. Uh, please ask questions while I'm doing this because. Uh, if you have any questions, by the way, uh, because it will be more understandable in that way. Uh, so, uh, for uh, our en environment, a uh, number of the actions in an environment, we have creating a, a zero array uh, in the size of our actions with NumPy. And for our, our actions, uh, we just uh, get our, we are using this R formula. And for every state, uh, for an every action, we are just calculating uh, current reward for taking and that action plus uh, the discounted next uh, state, as you can see here, and in this fun helper function. Uh, but if you go to the code, then I guess here, uh, this is the start of the function. We give our environment a variable. And this this uh, line is the starting. I think I guess uh, I will talk about this one step. Look at a little bit more after it, because we basically create for every state and m uh, dot ns means the number of the states in the environment. We create a value uh, matrix. More uh, like uh, we we do create this because we will hold all values of states. Uh, after uh, it, we also set the delta to zero and, and the starting, and it basically we will check basically if the delta means like our change in the last calculation to current calculation reaches a value so low, so we will stop calculating because it means we calculated basically all correct values, and after that our job will be just uh, taking the best maximum values. Like Actually, Urkan, yes, uh, I, I think a little bit about this question. Uh, it's just a, a search algorithm for uh, finding an uh, optimal value function, maybe, uh, and uh, we have to look every state and action couple. Maybe we can use an heuristic. Why not? But I don't know how to uh, do that. It can be a, a research area. I don't know. I don't know either, <laughs> so I don't. I have no comments about that. So I will talk about the code itself because this part is very important. Uh, so I won't have to explain in the other parts because in the other parts all, there are also little similar things for uh, one step look ahead process. Uh, it basically says for every state, uh, loop every state, and code this function. This function basically says just calculate uh, for given state and given value matrix are we just get our uh, get best uh, it doesn't actually mean says best it just says calculate uh, for each action in that state possible actions like for your if your state is like in the middle of uh, grid world you have uh, going up action going down action right and left action it says for those all, all four actions, like this creates a four uh, matrix for numbered, and calculate uh, the current reward for taking that action, uh, discount factor for the end uh, multiplied with the future uh, state value, and the probability of the, this policy. And in this grid world example, it is one. So it is just there for other like examples, but basically you can now ignore it. It's just one. And 
you, you will get uh, for uh, for this example there are four actions for most uh, problem uh, states uh, you will get a action array uh, with values so if you basically took maximum of it you will basically get if i did go up i will get this value if down this value and this another value the maximum of that will be the best value to take best action to take basically and this is what it does actually it gets the, the best action value but it doesn't say the best actions index i mean you don't get action you don't choose the action now you just choose the action that br brought you the best value but you are just choosing the value about that uh, because other parts about choosing policy directly is another algorithm and after that you just uh, set uh, your best value that you just calculated here uh, to your state basically for this state currently you will say this is the best uh, value and after you uh, calculate this for a long while your error uh, your error means like your difference in the calculation will be so slow uh, so low so you won't have to anymore by the way uh, uh, i believe our time is getting really really uh, to the end but i have to check it because it didn't give any errors i'm not sure why maybe there are something broken but i don't care I, uh, because there was a sh there should be errors, but I'm not sure I seeing it. So that's it. Can, can I ask a question here? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, where does the uh, impossible actions uh, uh, where were they elected? For example, in the leftmost of the grid, you can't go to the left. Where these impossible actions uh, or states elected? Uh, now currently we don't uh, like elect uh, or select uh, actions we just uh, given our like uh, the environment itself is comes from the open ai gym and they basically uh, all did uh, our most of the hard work for us so we just uh, ah, we don't have to the deal. yeah yeah Okay, okay. The infinite actions or actions that you can't take, like in the logically, those are already handled by uh, environments uh, itself. But uh, we just we just we don't we are not trying uh, choosing actions here. By the way, we are just calculating okay. the values because if you, we calculated the best values, the action selection will be just choosing the best one that gets best maximum value that will be best action basically i was i was going to talk about it and here is uh, here you can see uh, as we assume we get the best values calculated in our vectors uh, uh, matrix sorry we will basically just choose the one with the maximum value and our max basically says index of that and by getting index means you are getting your action the one value that you it basically says the value that you best index will be the action you should have to choose and we just set it to zero means we will always choose that action with no other action choosing any time policy because we are going to use policy uh, always for choosing actions and if we set to zero means always it is uh, deterministic so there's no other way to choose anything so this is for it in the value iteration it's not like just i said uh, something that you will use in the like, actual work but it's very have to, you basically have to know it because uh, it's very classic thing and this reshape policy basically says what it should uh, you should understand for this if you spawned in this state in a like some video game or whatever your uh, optimal policy we have calculated would be going up and if you were here you should also go up and here you should go up because this is the ending state but if you are here you have to go uh, right and 
yeah, this basically calculates value in a uh, like some spiral way, and you can also see the best uh, the values that you that given the best value function comes from the value function. And that's basically it for this. And I'm going to back to slides. And if you guys see any like uh, countdown message in the Zoom, please let me know. I'm not sure why it doesn't show up because we already passed 40 minutes. But maybe this is lucky day. <laughs> I'm not sure. Okay, and police evaluation. Uh, this is uh, another uh, important topic. And we will talk about this. Policy evaluation basically says uh, for a given policy, uh, how good it's to be in that policy. So it will calculate your uh, policy. And we will talk about here if we took random policy, which means uh, any action has like equal, uh, equal possibility, which is also equal to uh, 0 0.25, 25% for any state. So given that random policy, I choose random policy because it's very easy to calculate. Other, if you choose another another random number, it will be very hard to calculate for purposes of telling you to how it works. So basically we will calculate, if we had one 25% for each action, what will be the values for taking uh, any action? And it will be better understand here, I think. From the, yeah, by the way, this is just a zoom, uh, zoomed part of the, this same image. So you, you are not um, missing anything. I, I, I kind of missed one thing. Do you calculate conditional probability over there? Uh, no, no. Uh, the, all the, uh, I'm not sure what you mean by it, but... No, uh, can, you, can you go back? Like, can okay. you go back to the previous slide? Yeah. No, 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 the previous one. Like, where there's a formula. Yeah. What do you mean by I, A pipe S? What does that mean? That, that means your policy for uh, choosing an action for a given state. Oh, and that means that you're calculating a conditional probability. <laughs> no, no, I, that's not conditional probability. This is uh, your function but you're not con uh, calculating because we already know it's random policy of getting any action. Okay. You have keep basically keeping these values in a uh, like a data numpy array, whatever. Or you are just okay. choosing from that policy, updating that policy, updating that array or matrix, whatever. But that's something that's not really, uh, really related to conditional policy. I condition, conditional probability, sorry. Yeah, okay. it can be deterministic also, by the way. Oh, it, is, it, is it stochastic? It can be. It okay. depends on your problem or your choosing way, whatever, uh, your model. Okay. But uh, it's not like about it, uh, the actual problem. Uh, and for here, uh, I'm gonna I have, uh, zoom this image a little bit so you can guys see more. And it basically says uh, for any, like given, assuming we have, uh, have 25 percentage for each action. So basically calculating uh, our new value would be uh, just getting average of them because we have same possibility for choosing any of these four actions in this state. It talks about two to two state in uh, this example. And if you calculate it and took average of them, basically four means number of actions here. And this is just for purposes. Uh, and you will get your new value uh, with this formula, which also calculated. And basically just you are getting your new uh, value. This is just works, by the way, we have, we know we have four actions and we also know we are taking, taking the random policy or uh, calculating. The policy evaluation itself is kind of uh, complements the other part of this presentation, which is policy iteration, but I will also try to uh, show 
how it works in the code so you don't you guys can understand a little bit but the basically okay guys can you guys see the screen okay and this is the policy relation which we will work with same environment and everything is just same and for uh, uh, discount factor is also same and our theta is just about the same I believe but I have to check about it and uh, in the code I will start with this uh, here we basically uh, create a, a random policy which means creating for uh, creating a numpy array with state actions that what it means in the for policy just basically hold all the, the think you want to uh, choose about it and you just also uh, divide by the number of the actions because each action has same possibility so no actions is preferred to one to each other so this is very like stupid actually if you if you use this as only this it will be very stupid because in the you're basically calculating a lot of things and you're assuming each action has same possibility but in the reality, it doesn't. It shouldn't. And, and here, when calculating, the actually problem itself is very easy for calculation. And it also looks similar to value iteration part. Basically, we calculate, uh, create a new uh, value given number of the uh, states we have. And for each state, and each uh, probability of taking that action, uh, we cal we calculate how what will be value. This is basically the same thing we did in the slides. And the prop is given from the environment, and this is uh, deterministic, so it's one. Uh, don't care for this. The action probability is the one you should care, and and this is uh, basically we are using uh, equal probability. So this will be. Uh, 25 percent just like we uh, actually calculated in the slides and this is basically doing that in formalization reward and uh, current uh, reward you take for action discounted next values this will be given uh, and calculate the value and you will basically again do the same thing you uh, for this type of dynamic algorithms you basically care for the difference between your new calculation and old calculation, you can hold that value. And for any other thing, you always update that delta and you look for current difference part. And you, after the calculation of that state, you basically uh, assign to current state value, means you calculated the value of that state for all actions and you basically uh, looped all the actions and calculated this this is very of course impossible to do in real life because you are basically calculating each action for given each uh, state this is really impossible in actual world examples and i will also uh, continue this because other part will also incorporate the same function i will talk more detail here if you guys have any questions or can you see it? I don't know. You guys are not responding. Uh, okay. We just talked like um, I asked if um, if the uh, all of the states and future rewards and everything include uncertainty and Umchan told me like no, uh, they are all deterministic. But does your does your policy iterations and evaluations and everything change when you um, when uncertainty is involved? Like, do you know about it? What do you mean by uncertainty? Actually, I mean, it's about environment, it, and I don't remember. Uh, maybe we should check. Check. Like stochastic, uh, I mean, Urkan. This. Uh, like there are probabilities and uncertainties associated with yes, every this, uh, reward. This environment is uh, given one for, uh, I, I actually talk about this, I think, I'm not sure. 
but uh, this prop uh, here actually is what you I believe talking about and when you print this like if not I can I believe uh, I mean I'm just it's... talking like what if it, it was like stochastic you know like I'm talking like what if because that, I know then, that you then you been... would use uh, I believe uh, distribution instead of like one value and you have to sample okay. from that and there are like things like that but uh, I mean it's really not I think what it's uh, about the dynamic evaluation uh, you okay. use uh, distribution in some algorithms but uh, okay. not for like this example and this algorithm okay actually um, we can check from the environment <laughs> if it probability is one it's uh, yeah, yeah I, I checked here before the starting and I believe it's one but okay uh, I believe after it we can check it still but we have to complete slides first so we want okay. uh, because there are some little parts uh, we haven't we are at the half but the time is getting very fast okay I will talk about poly iteration more in the code but uh, for the slides it basically means uh, we are not going to on, only like uh, always have a fixed policy like always random we will improve our policy based on the choosing maximum uh, value state and that's basically the difference between uh, the last one and for uh, calculating and max uh, calculating that part we will also use the code, same basically same code from the value iteration parts and i think I, this will be very um, more understandable in this picture and more in the code because the code itself is basically the continuation but uh, it means we will uh, run the, our current policy we will uh, estimate or uh, what, what was it called and evaluate okay evaluate our policy and we will choose the best uh, maximum what i mean from the best because we don't know uh, choosing maximum is what we are trying to achieve because we are trying to get the max uh, rewards and we will act act greedily uh, about when choosing action and that's basically will be improve our policy so we will have best policy and that will mean solving the grid world example with the reinforcement learning and here I will go to code, then I will talk about multi armed bandits. And yep, uh, that's here. Uh, anyone have any questions about state? By the way, our English friends left conversation. So I can also accept Turkish questions, I guess, uh, if you have. Also, uh, okay, this. Police evaluation part is the same part as the last code, so I'm not gonna will, uh, talk about that much. This is the part is that is new. Actually, this isn't even the new because we already looked about the one step look at. This is very like, how should I say? It's very common function on the dynamic programming part of police reinforcement learning. This part is the new. This also just means combining both parts. We, we don't see the code screen. Oh, sorry. Uh, yes, that's my bad. I uh, I thought I chose it. Okay, I, I will go back. And I can you see it now? Yes, it's okay. Thanks. Uh, yep. This po policy evaluation part is just the same thing uh, from the last uh, notebook. And the one step look ahead function is also the same thing from the first notebook. And that also basically you are going to, for each action, you are calculating the, uh, how, what's the value of that action and you are just returning that. This is like very basic stuff, but it's basically you are brute forcing, I mean not brute forcing, but something like that. For each state, you are calculating each value and you are choosing the maximum of it. But this is really, un I mean, not possible in actual examples, besides like this very easy examples. Uh, this function basically uh, calculates new value, and this is from the policy evaluation part notebook. And 
what it means by the policy table, which it means basically, did we achieve best policy? Uh, best policy would be given some value. Value means our uh, matrix non-pi array. Did we choose the best action? What is the best action? The one with the maximum value. If we always choose the maximum value action, that means we are basically solved this problem. So if we solve this problem, we will basically return. So this is used for that. And the rest part is just basically saying for each state, uh, given your policy, what is the action you will choose? Because argmax means index of that uh, array. And this gives you uh, the one uh, array with the values of uh, the values that taken by the actions and if you took index of it you will basically get an action to choose and if your action to choose is best action to choose basically you solve the problem and one step look ahead means and go with your current state and current value function what are the values that are calculated and this is the actual best one and if you're chosen one is also same as the best action to choose. Basically, you means you solved it. If you didn't, uh, if you didn't solve it, you will update your policy with uh, NPI, which means basically diagonal uh, matrix with uh, best action given. It will. Uh, give, it will print you some um, to automatically create you a, a diagonal matrix, which will means you will have to uh, take the best action index part, and you will update your policy. And after uh, you, yeah, basically this part is also converts or calculates in uh, this delta theta part because if this is getting better, so you will you won't have problems. And this basically also gets the same uh, policy. The difference between the first one and the third one, notebook, this is more um, cost efficient and faster compared to other one. And I will go back to slide and talk about a little more before uh, the rest of the questions. And I will talk a little bit about the multi hundred form problem and what does it mean for uh, reinforcement learning and exploitation and exploration and this is a really big interesting concept uh, about reinforcement learning because uh, we talk about like greedy greedy choosing and basically we are just using a random value there but this is not good not a smart approach you basically have one state uh, that is usual usual place which you know that is good, but there is also some uncertainty here, grand opening. Uh, so you don't know where to go. Uh, if you go here, you will get some good food, but if you go here, that might be better or worse. So if you go always here, you will never explore this area and, and you will miss rewards. So basically you have to find some way to combine balance your exploration and exploitation. And basically, there, this is really active topics in reinforcement learning that currently isn't solved, but there are some ways to work with in the code. One is uh, acting greedy, one is Gaussian noise, and one is the random noise, which I believe they are very similar. And yeah, that's uh, that's it about exploitation. If you have any questions about this problem, this uh, what, I, what I mean from this, if you are not, I will talk about the ways to solve about this problem. I'm talking ways because they are not actually like very solid proven methods. I mean, they uh, they basically help with implementation, but they're not actual solutions to the problem. This problem is also very uh, always uh, active problem, not currently solved. And multi arm problem is really about it. Yeah, really about this problem, exploitation exploration problem. 
and you have a problem in the Las Vegas <laughs> slot machines basically what is the best uh, slot to choose you don't know uh, any possibility what will it will give you uh, when you choose money or use the plug to get uh, the game so you you won't you won't know so you will basically just randomly explore environments and there's a, some law about large numbers which means if you do something uh, do much as you can you will basically get the expected value in the end but uh, as you don't know the probabilities of this you won't get the best one you will get someone expected value but that that might not be best and this is not useful you like uh, brute forcing all numbers that's like that's like applying uh, Monte Carlo simulation and uh, in the end getting expected um, expected values for both options you know like that's also associated with the um, with the love of large numbers like you yeah, yeah. simulate a lot and then in the end you know you have your uncertainties and everything and then you basically multiply your uncertainty and your value and then just sum them up and you get some you converge eventually to whatever the results are. Yeah, I Am believe. I right? Yeah, yeah, I didn't actually uh, uh, explore this law of large numbers in the code, but I believe from what I read in the Wikipedia, it's very similar. Yes, but the problem is uh, the law of the large numbers actually doesn't work for our uh, problems because our uh, problems and our states always change in after we always t take action so this is really impractical impossible more like, like in the in the previous slide what was what uh, just appeared appeared in my mind was that we can just apply monte carlo simulation and see if the new grand opening place will yield more value than the usual yeah. place you know yeah, <laughs> like... actually monte carlo is one of the algorithms in rl and we will cover it i don't know maybe Okay, I, I'm yeah. sorry to interrupt. <laughs> yeah, but what uh, we're actually talking about is, isn't like... Uh, I mean, this can change, like it's dynamic, like the states are always changing and everything, so like um, that's, uh, yeah. that's kind of... Like, yeah, even with the Monte Carlo, you have to uh, have a way to explore or exploit some place. The algorithm you choose doesn't matter. It can change whatever the algorithms, but uh, what it matters is if you always go for the thing you know that will get the best reward or some uncertain thing it might get bad or better you don't know as long as you don't if you don't explore you want you will always go to usual place and you will get some nice reward but that this right place maybe get one million you don't know and but the problem is actually here how to uh, what's the ways to you will go like 10 ways, uh, 10 times right or whatever. What, what's the solution there? There's not currently. But there are hacks about this. Uh, a greedy is one. By the way, if somebody ask a question in the chat, I can't see it. Uh, uh, no, no, it's my way. <laughs> okay. I just it's, said simulation is the way. <laughs> okay. Um, but actually, uh, there are several ways in Monte Carlo, but uh, in Monte Carlo methods, uh, you have to take the reward. After that, you can uh, improve your policy. Sorry. Uh, and the e greedy basically means uh, given for uh, you have a random number, and in like computer, you create a number which is not actually random, but uh, for a given greedy value, if you uh, pass that value or smaller that than value you will uh, explore and otherwise you will use your known you know, like your better whatever policy and other times you will randomly explore this is uh, really not ideal solution but this is the one which is used in the most not the most but some algorithms uh, which is also used in the really advanced algorithms like QN or neural network based ones even those still use this type of exploration 
because you can't uh, basically solve that problem with neural network that's the, it still exists because it's the fundamental problem that you have yes uh, something that you believe it is good but how do you know without like exploring the world you do, can't how do you explore the world and you basically this is very like uh, antique method i believe i think the other ones are uh, much better like Gaussian uh, noise or other noises but this is one method that also works in given some problem and like what it works in the very what can i say limited some problems because if your state is very complex this algorithm would almost always fail because you will always uh, f uh, won't explore the states that would give you most reward and there's some another algorithm which is called upper confidence uh, confidence bonds bonds and this algorithm actually isn't one algorithm there are some variations of it and this is also really explored recently i also saw a paper today about this topic and it basically uh, assumes randomness about uh, possibilities and this is uh, just i mean you can basically see it if it uses randomness it won't be good because it's inefficient inefficient and we have basically conf uh, having bounds like limits of our exploration we are basically limiting our exploration and there is some function called ut which is the upper bound function for each action basically says for that action how can you how much you should uh, explore uh, this function is calculated by some different methods there are really complex methods for calculating this but if you can somehow calculate it with any of those you will basically add to your current value and that would give you uh, the bounds the limits of your exploration and the other one uh, how to calculate the up, uh, upper confidence bounds a bound there are four uh, really one of the things that i know i think uh, about it and one is hofting inequality principle which means you don't know how uh, the distribution works i mean the last example in the grid world we know about how it works but if you haven't really know nothing about uh, no info about the world this is the one i believe you should use but this is really inefficient the ucb one is another one that i have not much in the info about it but it's believe it calculates a little more uh, pro efficiently than this one the bayesian uh, is to choose if you have uh, estimations about uh, distribution and this is uh, yes we fix this also and the thompson sampling is very uh, used in the recent algorithms and this is also uh, like bayesian you have some knowledge about environment or distribution uh, they are kind of biased biased and that's basically it so i will have to take your questions for the rest of it Uh, anyone have questions? I kind of asked. Does anyone here? <laughs> I mean, the 10 of us people left during our battle, I guess. Uh, yeah. Uh, how, how does this week's like implementation compares? I mean, does it more? I, well, I uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Hello. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can. Uh, can you? I believe you can't, but uh, you can chat right from the chat, by the way, if you can't. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, I, 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 I hear you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, we are trying to find the uh, best values uh, to choose our actions. Is it uh, right? Uh, can, can you repeat? I couldn't hear you correctly. 
okay uh we are trying to find the maximum values to choose our actions am i right yeah we are uh, if you are using a value based algorithm that that is the, the approach you are taking but there are other ways to uh, get the in, uh, in the reinforcement learning like the problem is to get maximum rewards to get the maximum rewards either you calculate the values and after calculating values you will choose the basically uh, maximum one that will be yes the want to go but uh, you can also go without calculating values you wouldn't know what's the value because you are not caring for value you would basically get to optimize the policy and that will also be converged to best rewards your main problem is getting best rewards two two or three ways to get about that either you calculate the values and you get the ones with the maximum, you get things that get you maximum, or you basically go directly to the maximum reward by calculating changing policy. And this is like the difference between policy uh, methods, policy gradients, and value-based like Q-learning, etc. And there are some ones... Türkçe de anlatalım ya hemen. Yani okay, kısaca, ben bunu rekordu yani, kapatıyorum bence, şu an. Tamam. Ee, ya bizim derdimiz burada e, en iyi bulmak.